Amen. He was born in Africa, West Africa. Amen. Uh, uh, actually, he lived near the desert of Seth. Ooh, and there shouldn't be a desert of Seth in Africa where people are not supposed to know their Bible. But let's continue to go deep. All right, because Seth was the son of Adam after Abel and Cain went through their thing. Amen. You don't name no desert the desert of Seth if you don't know your Bible. All right. And it was named that before the Europeans came. But let's go deeper. Raised in this area near the desert of Seth. Amen. He was from the Ebu people. Ebu people. He was an Ebu. All right. 1745 from southern Nigeria. One day, amen, he was from a wealthy family of the Ibu people. One day, he's with his sister, amen, mom and daddy going to work and stuff like that, doing their thing. Listen, uh, uh, Negro land was more civilized than a lot of people give us credit for, amen. Some people jumped over the wall in their village, amen, and kidnapped uh, uh, Ola, Ola Uda and his sister, sold them into slavery. Kidnap him and sold him into slavery. All right? When him and his sister were sold, they were trying to stay together. I think his sister was three years old, something like that. Amen. They were separated. It left an indelible impression upon his soul. He was so hurt, he wanted to die. Amen. That would be like somebody jumping in, kidnapping Grace and Omar, and they stand together as tough much as they can, but they sell them apart. You know? Ola Uda. I'm hearing a little feedback. Or oh, is that the rain? A little feedback? What's that? A little feedback. Y'all can help me out. Vinny, can you help me out with that? Is that me or what? So, so Ola Uda was sold into slavery. All right? They cross Africa. They walk across Africa and everything like that. He's moving from people to people. Finally, they sell him to European slave traders. He, you should read. I'm going to get to it. But when you read his own writing, he writes about his adventures. All right? He, he comes to the waters of the Atlantic and he sees a slave ship for the first time. And he's like, what is that fortress sitting on the water? But his, 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 his autobiography says he was amazed by it. But when he stepped on the ship, he realized, amen, that he was in a most cursed situation. That he was about to lose his life. When they took him under the, the deck of the ship, you see, and he saw all of his people packed in like sardines, laying in their own excrement and mess. He said a smell almost killed him. Now he's 11 year old at this time, all right? They bring him to the Caribbean, which was the slaves, uh, uh, slave, uh, transatlantic slave trade. Bring him over there. He said the atrocities that he witnessed. He mark them out all in his book. He actually has a book, y'all. All right? All right? So, so he, he, he illustrates all of the atrocities. All right. He gets to America. Hallelujah. He he learns the the seaman trade. He becomes a sea, a seaman. They used to call him blackjacks uh, uh, when when people uh, from Africa became great seamen. And he was very smart, very astute. Amen. He began to learn how to read. Amen. He was sold to an Englishman and the Englishman was taking care of him. And and he said the first time he heard the Bible and began to hear about Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And began to hear about the laws of Moses. He, it arrested him. And he said, wait up. He said, most of that sound like the practices of my people. Ooh. Hey, read his book. Read his book. He said, most of that sound like the practices of my people. You see what I'm saying? Well, what, 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 what did he say? He said, well, just like the Hebrews of the Bible, he said, we have one true God. We worship him. He is the creator of all things. And when we did a study on his language, they call him a name. And when you, when you do the etymology of the name that the Hebrews called him, that, that, that Ola Uda called him, they didn't just call him God. They called him the God of Abraham. Somebody got to hear me up in here. Somebody, listen, listen. If you was waiting for something, this right here is what we would call in the courtroom the smoking gun right here. This is the, this is the best evidence that I can give you, this Ola Uda. You'll never hear him in school because they don't want you to know about him. All right? All right? This is the smoking gun feeling. You know what I'm saying? Listen to me. Now listen to me. We saw in the scriptures, but we're giving you physical evidence. Hola, Uda. All right? 
They not only worship the one true God that they called the God of Abraham, amen. But the interesting thing is, is that the Ebus also practice circumcision on the eighth day. On the eighth day. They waited until the eighth no. day. Well, Pastor, what is circumcision? Circumcision is the sign of the covenant. Oh, God have mercy. Meaning that God would show who his covenant people would be by a sign. And that sign would be the sign of circumcision. And, and my little wife, amen, she's so astute and, and researching. And she found, amen, hallelujah, go, go look up circumcision. And, and, and what part of the world has the most circumcised people? And it's all of West Africa. More circumcised people than the United States, Europe, amen, all over the world. The sign of the covenant. Ola Uda. He says people were circumcised on the eighth day. Do your research. Most of the slaves that came in were circumcised. You, 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 you don't know. You don't know. It's the sign of the covenant. More slaves were circumcised than slave owners. And white folk that was here in America. The sign of the covenant. Ola Uda not only said that. He said that we practice just like the law of Leviticus. The laws of purity, cleanliness, and uncleanness. We can't touch a dead body. There's some things that we could eat and that we can't eat. Ooh, things that's kosher and not kosher. You, are you hearing me up in here? He was reading and he said, that's us. Ola Uda, this is 1745, Brian. He said they practice animal sacrifices to atone for their sins. He, he said they practice the feast according to the law of Moses. Huh? One of the weirdest things was that just like a woman before she got married had to provide, a, the man had to provide a dowry. They did the same thing as the, the list go on and on. We can look at Ola Uda's name and see where he's from. Da Uda, Da Uda means Judah. Da Uda means Judah. His parents was naming him and saying what tribe he was from. And when you read this young man's narrative, he would always say that it was the Most High that was keeping him alive. And I know why the Most High was keeping him alive. Because though he's dead now, yet he's speaking. They made him, hallelujah. He was the first black autobiographer. 1745, wrote all about his life. Earned so much money as a seaman, he went to his master, put the money on the table and said, I want to buy myself back. You understand what I'm saying? Ola Uda bought himself back at 20 years old. After he bought himself back, amen, he started, amen, a career as an abolitionist to try to abolish slavery in Europe. He was in England and London, amen, at the time. While in England and London, he writes his book, his masterpiece, his autobiography, The Interesting Life, The Narrative of Ola Uda. And this is where we get so much information about his past and about his people, which you have to realize that his people are our people. Now, now, the Bible says in Deuteronomy, and I got a rule, y'all, that every word is established by the mouth of two witnesses. Meaning that if we can give you two witnesses, that you can't look at me like I'm crazy. Like I don't have no evidence. Like Pastor on about everything else but this, and something is wrong with him. He took too much of that sinus medicine again. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. If we provide your narratives from history like Ola Uda, if we're giving you all of these scriptures, amen, all of the artifacts from Egypt, who's crazy for not believing? Listen, 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 listen. Another man about a hundred years, a European man, a white man, a hundred years after Olauda, G.T. Baston. He went to win them for Jesus. He wrote a book about it, and his book was called Among the Ebus of Nigeria. He lived in 1873 to 1944, amen. 
Some say he wrote his book or it was uh, 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 redone around 1921, but he wrote about all of his, his adventures. Now, now listen to me. Anytime they don't want you to read a book, you can go buy a big old book on Amazon for $3. But anytime you're about to touch something they don't want you to read, you're going to pay for it. I done bought books on Amazon. With, li listen to me now. Or, or eBay. Or, or, I, done, I done bought books. Amen. That regular books, little small books, that's supposed to be $5, they're $152. But you see, the way that the Ashkenazis control the publishing industry is so smart. They buy all of the books that's in circulation. They'll buy your books if you write against them. Store them up or destroy them. And the few that's left, they're going to jack up the price. And they know nobody going to buy them and read them. This book by J.D., uh, GT, G GT, that's his name? Like Grace Tebow, GT? His, his, this book? Hallelujah. The cheapest one we can find was $54. But we got it. You understand what I'm saying? We got it. It don't matter. It don't matter. We're going to get it. Now let me tell you why it's so expensive. GT said that the Ibu country lies within the recognized region that we would call the Negro Belt. He's talking about Negro land. All right. He says that the Igbo people bear the main characteristic of that stock. <laughs> he said they bear the characteristics of Negro land. He says that there are certain customs rather point to Levitic influence at a more or less remote period. He says that the customs remind him of the book of Levi, the, the uh, book of Leviticus. This is suggested in the underlying ideas concerning sacrifice, the practice of circumcision. Even their language bears several interesting parallels with Hebrew idioms. Their language, my wife always tells me, is in the words, is in the language. You can hear the Hebrew in their language. G.T. Baston was so sure that the Hebrews were of Israel. Let me say that again. G.T. Basin was so sure that the Hebrews were of Israel that he told other missionaries before they went out to witness to the Hebrews, he told them, read your Old Testament. Because the only way you're going to know these people is to read their book. Ooh, God have mercy. It's to read their Old Testament. That, that's what he told the missionary. He said, read the Old Testament. That's the, that's the only way you're going to be able to win them. Why? Because the Ebu live like the ancient Israelites. The word is confirmed by, by two witnesses. Who don't, who don't believe in him? I got to move on. Even to this day, the Ebus are still proven to be the true Israelites of the Bible. Let's move through some pictures. I showed you the picture, amen, already of the Ebu people, amen. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, give me another picture right here. We're going to keep on going. Hallelujah. I think we have a CNN article. If you can put that up. If not, we're going to move on through it. Yes, yeah, CNN. Look what it says. Nigeria's Ibu Jews, the lost tribe of Israel with a question mark. But in that article, now you never see that on mainstream news. In that article, they quote G.T. Ba uh, 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 Baston. And, and they quote Ola Uda. But they'll never play it on, on, on real news and they'll never put it in the schools. They won't tell you also that in 1996, the Israeli ambassador to Nigeria got so emotional when he saw the evidence that Alauda and Basin was talking about and different archaeological finds of bronze, amen, uh, uh, pointing to uh, their lineage. He got so overwhelmed that he burst into tears and cried, the Israeli ambassador. Acknowledging that the Ebus were the were among the lost tribe of Israel, and he gave Asnira, the king of the Ebus, a gift of olives and oil, stating that such gifts were only given to the kings of Israel. Man, I'm trying to tell you something, man. I'm I'm trying, Miss Janet, Janet. I'm trying my best right here. I, I present this case in any court of law. You understand what I'm saying? Listen to me now. 
in October 23, 1997, Yazid David, an American Ashkenazi, and Zaghi David, an American Ashkenazi, another delegate, they said that after much research were on the work of the origin of the Ebus, the archaeological findings indicate that Israel is the true home, and they should make a quick comeback for a historical reunion. Come on, give God some glory. I'm trying to tell you, man. I'm trying to tell you. I got to keep moving, babe, but I'm so excited. Listen to me. But the problem is this. Hair and Trish and Duff. You want the Ebus to come back, but you done forgot about a larger group, like Olauda, who was taken from Ebu land. Listen, we have people in here who have tested genetically. And they've gone to that, that better genetic test than, than, than we took. They went to that, uh, 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 that uh, what is it called, B? What is it called? Ancestry.com, where they trace the exact tribe you're from. I could bring people to stand up. And you know what tribe their DNA say? Ibu. In fact, if you study Whitney Plantation in Wallace, Louisiana, our PCA go and visit them. Titus went over that. Hallelujah, just recently. Amen. When you go on their website, they're going to tell you where most of their slaves came from. Most of their slaves were Ibu. In fact, when they went to buy slaves, everybody wanted Ibus. They were the hottest commodity. Stronger, faster, more docile because we knew we was in our situation because we turned our back on God. So we wasn't trying to start no trouble. But we done done our 400 years. We done done our 400 years. Come on. It's the fourth quarter. Raise it up. Raise it up. It's the fourth quarter. It's the fourth quarter, baby. 2019 marks 400 years. And a shaking is happening. An awakening is happening. Olaura. See? So they show Whitney Plantation show. That's how that all that research started. We looking at Whitney Plantation. She asked me, you want to go with us to Whitney Plantation? I said, I don't want to go on no plantation. Make me mad. I don't want to go on no plantation. <laughs> so she started researching. You know? So much so, saints. Listen, listen, listen. And it's not just the Ibus, no. There's many tribes in Negro land. We studied about the Ashanti, the Bantu, the U. It was different. It was a whole area that they took us from. All right? So much so that when they researched the words okra, when they researched the words gumbo, Those words come from our etymology. They come from Negro land. Listen to me, you might not 